Whoa, take a look at that. What the heck is that? That is the rare and rarely seen book called Telling is Not Teaching by Mike Thompson. Find it at Amazon.com. Hello everybody, welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School and my name is Mike Thompson. Our topic today is hydraulic systems. When we say hydraulic systems, what we're talking about are aircraft systems that are operated with a liquid. Now hydraulic fluid is a petroleum product, not all of it, but most of it, is a petroleum product and it's a, it's a liquid. And liquid is considered, under normal conditions, to be uncompressible. To compress a liquid, we would have to have extreme pressures and temperatures that are way beyond anything we deal with in aviation. So how do we use this liquid and its uncompressible nature to operate systems in aircraft? Well, on large aircraft, especially older large aircraft, sometimes the flight control systems <clears throat> were operated through a hydraulic power. Retractable landing gear systems, very frequently, in fact, in most cases, that uses hydraulic power to raise and lower the gear. If you had an aircraft with a controllable pitch propeller, also called a constant speed propeller, that's controlled with an, uh, an incompressible liquid oil. You don't have a constant speed propeller on the Cessna 172. You have a fixed pitch propeller. You also have fixed gear and your flight controls are not hydraulic. So you might think, well, on the good old 172, I don't have any hydraulic systems. Ah, think a little more carefully. In fact, you have one hydraulic system on your 172, and that is your brake system. The brakes on your 172 are hydraulically controlled. And you can see in this first diagram what we call the master cylinder. And you see the picture of this pilot's foot pressing the pedal. The pedal applies a mechanical pressure to the cylinder, and the cylinder applies pressure to that liquid. Now that liquid is going to pass through hydraulic lines and they run down your landing gear on the 172 and they run right to each of the main gear and you can see in this diagram it runs to a set of disc brakes on the left wheel and on the right wheel. So in the 172 your rudder pedals also double as nose wheel steering on the ground and then, as we know, if we lift our feet up and push our toes on the top of the pedals, we have braking action. And that's what you're doing here. You're pushing that incompressible hydraulic fluid through those hydraulic lines down to those disc brakes. So on this third and final diagram, you can get an idea of how that cylinder is connected to your brake pedals and where that line runs. Take a look. This is depicting that rudder pedal and attached to it you see that hydraulic cylinder. When you put pressure on the top of that rudder pedal, that's what we call the toe brakes. You're using pressure from the toes of your foot to activate that uh, cylinder and push the fluid and you can see the line run down here down the gear to the disc and that gives you braking action on both the left and right wheel. One question is hey if I push on one or I push on the other or I push on both is that both wheels? In the 172 these are independent so let's look back at that diagram the left pedal breaks the left wheel. The right pedal breaks the right wheel. 
So they could be used independently or they could be used together. Well folks, that's a quick overview of hydraulic systems and our braking system on the 172. See you for the next session.